Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to Steph AB TV and welcome to sunny Monaco. You join me here kind of on the pier, if you like. A very familiar setting because I've been here before a couple of years back in an Audi RS7. However, this time I bought this, the Mini UK JCW. 230 horsepower from its two litre turbocharged engine, eight speed automatic box. And well, it's a fitting car to take on the Formula One Grand Prix track. Although with a slight difference, because let's be honest, uh, we're in here in Monaco, the police are super strict and I won't be breaking any speed limits. But what I will do is show you guys around and just embrace Monaco in this beautiful weather. So uh, let's jump in the car and let's go for a lap. Okay, good morning guys. This may look a little bit confusing to you because I'm wearing a different colored t-shirt to what I was about 10 seconds ago in the intro. However, the reason I'm doing that is because I royally screwed up my lap of the Monaco GP circuit yesterday. There was loads of traffic. I almost knocked over a, a scooter person. I evaded the police when they looked like they should have told me to stop i took the wrong turn you name it i did it and i sat down and i thought to myself i'm really not happy with how that footage came out so i'm doing it again um, but if you do want to watch those calamities um stay till the end because i'm going to leave them in so you can have a look at just how terrible that lap was so we're going to make our way to the start line and we will do a lap of the gp circuit and hopefully this time I do a full circuit. Here we go, start, finish straight. This is where it all happens. On my right, you see that's normally where all the pit straight is. So all that lovely mechanical masterpiece that the pit engineers do happens in there. Right now in front of us, you can probably see on the floor, you've got the markings with all the kind of Formula One car positions for, for the start. And one thing that really strikes me is just how narrow this kind of road is. And if you think about, oh, here's the start line right here. And if you think about how fast these all belt down to turn one, it's, it's mind-blowing, it's completely mind-blowing, the, the fact that you can just chuck Formula One cars around here. The next corner here, I mean, just here on the left is a pretty big runoff area, and when everybody kind of causes a bit of a calamity at the start line, that's where your runoff area is for the track. Uh, here, we now head up towards the casino, up towards Casino Square. And one of the striking things is just how steep this area is. Like you can just see the incline, and we're obviously doing it in a mini, but you can imagine in a Formula One car doing 180 miles per hour up this area. And it gets even kind of more narrow in a moment as we kind of come across the hotel complex, which you'll see very, very shortly. The other interesting thing as well, the last time that I came here, uh, the whole of the Casino Square area was in, in kind of construction. So I didn't really get a chance to see Casino Square in all of its glory. However, hopefully today uh, we do get to see that. And also the sun is shining here in Monaco. It's flipping great, man. I absolutely love it here. It's just such a nice place. Such a nice place. So again, you can see here as we veer into the kind of uh, hotel, look at this, look how narrow this is. And again, they are still full pelt round here as we open up into what is probably kind of the most, one of the most prestigious, if not the most prestigious square in all of Monaco where the rich and wealthy pay so much money just to show off and, and kind of show everybody how wealthy they are. As you can see on the left, we've got Hotel de Paris on the left hand side there. I think it's yes, Hotel de Paris. And we've got the casino here. Beautiful, beautiful location, if you see. And Cafe de Paris over there, a great spot if you want to kind of enjoy and indulge in a bit of uh, sightseeing, wealth spotting. Nice Porsche 911 Turbo here. Obviously, in the Formula One track, they don't do this specific bit. Um, they kind of go around it. Um, in fact, I'm not sure, do they? I think they come here from the left where that man is standing. Anyway, we now enter the route towards the Fairmont hairpin, and uh, you can see this massive undulation here on the left-hand side. The Formula One cars will actively try and come close to where I am here on the right-hand side, and the reason they do that is because they're carrying so much speed. If they don't, they'll end up airborne and it's straight into kind of tip-top pizza here on the left-hand side, and, well, nobody wants that, do they? Now, this, as we approach the uh, Fairmont Hotel, the Fairmont hairpin, the most, uh, the, well, the slowest and tightest corner on the Formula One calendar. And you'll be able to see why in a second. But the thing, the thing for me about Monaco as well, is there's always something going on. If you've been here, you'll, you'll kind of agree and, and it will kind of ring true with what I'm saying is, you never really see Monaco in a state of calm. You know, I think the only time I saw it in a bit of a state of calm was when me and Joe came and it was kind of pretty much almost pandemic. But even then they were constructing. As you can see here, we've got the Fairmont Hotel and the Fairmont Hairpin, which again, you think of a Formula One car with not a great turning circle, <laughs> trying to get around this at super slow speeds and then opening up as we head down towards the, uh, the famous tunnel. 
Now, here in Monaco, if you are attempting to do a lap record of which Max, Max Verstappen, I believe, currently holds at 1 minute 14 seconds, I think he did that in 2019, there's no way that I'm going to be able to do that because the Monaco police here are extremely strict. And as you've probably seen in this video, they're flipping everywhere. They don't want you revving their car, your cars. They don't want you speeding. They, and if you do get caught doing any of that, you're going to be landed with a very hefty fine, uh, but also you could run the risk of having your car impound. Anymore. We don't want to do that. And now through this tunnel. Now, what isn't really as noticeable, but if you take, if you think about Formula One car, this kind of right hander here, it's actually like a 45 degree right hander. And you think a Formula One car going you know, 160 miles per hour around this corner, the amount of G-force the drivers will feel in their necks approaching this. And on a sunny day, you go from really dark in the tunnel and it opens up into pure kind of sunlight. And when you're wearing a Formula One visor, it's almost like you're coming out blind until your kind of eyes um, focus and readjust. And now you'll see uh, where we get the kind of that really big chicane where a lot of that, if I'm honest, most of the overtakes tend to happen where people break late, they do this little chicane bit here and then come back in as we start to approach the swimming, uh, the swimming pool complex. And it is, I mean, look, it's just a, can you just admire the views here, guys? How nice is Monaco? It is absolutely sensational. So much cash, so much cash. Very popular with uh, electric scooters, smart cars, and Renault Twizzies, I might add. Now, we're gonna deviate here to the swimming pool complex. Uh, again, one of the really fast parts of the track, which, um, if you get it wrong, you end up causing massive accidents and likely red flags. But we're not gonna be doing any of that. Um, this is the rich part, I guess. If you've got money and you've got a yacht, if you're able to moor your yacht here for the start for the Formula One, you are paying through your mouth to do that. But me and my wife did a little bit of a recce last night and um, yeah, it's fair to say I'm slightly jealous of how much money these people have. <laughs> but anyway, again, this is a very, very fast section of the Formula One track. You can just see as well, the tight lefts and rights. Obviously at the moment there's a lot of construction. It's not as kind of 45 degree as this, but in a Formula One race car where downforce is your friend, you are going very, very quickly and you need so much focus to keep that car on this tarmac rather than sending it into the bloody bay. This, a very famous corner where people take it far too quick. Max has been renowned for coming around this bit too quickly, not cat or clipping the, uh, the front tire on that wall, snapping the suspension, going straight into here, which um, again, very expensive mistake, likely to cause a red flag. As we now enter the final part of the lap, which is Raskas. Um, very nice place, by the way, if you come here. Don't come on a Monday, because it's closed, but every other time of the day, uh, every other day of the week, sorry, uh, Raskas is very, very nice. If you want a nice beer and you want to overlook the sea, yeah, there you go. And that, my friends, is the Monaco Grand Prix. Not bad, if you ask me. We didn't do it in one minute and uh, 14 seconds, like Max Verstappen has, uh, but we did it in, well, I don't know, probably about seven minutes, but, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. It's a very kind of light-hearted bit of entertainment. It's fast becoming tradition for me every time I come to Monaco to do a lap in a car that I'm in um, and just absorb these beautiful views I'm sure you guys are enjoying as well. But if you did enjoy the video, guys, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, I'm gonna see you all very soon on the next one. Make sure to check out my mountain review of the Mini JCW and also my London to Monaco vlog. This is a three-part trilogy, so uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. I don't know. It's traffic, man. I wasn't planning this traffic. Is they'll go straight. They go through that way. We're gonna go slightly different. No, we've gone the wrong way. Oh dear. No scooters. Oh. Scooters. I'm probably gonna get loads of fines as well for doing loads of illegal maneuvers. Oh.